I'm going to be doing a problem today looking at falling projectiles. Falling projectiles means just the projectile uh, with no acceleration, so a released from the hand of somebody. Projectile motion is something you're going to do a lot in this course, and we're going to do a number of different types of solution approaches, and this one is kind of a, a middling to a kind of complex problem. The only difference here, and I can't really do this in lecture, but I can do it here, is I can use computer algebra. I tried a different video uh, once, which was focused on the software itself, and it turns out to be kind of meh in terms of what it looked like. So I have two people, one on the ground and one on top of a building. And what's happening is that this person right here is ball A, and ball A is thrown vertically upward from the top of a 30 meter high building with an initial velocity of five meters per second. On the other side, I have ball B, and here she is, and she's throwing the ball up at 20 meters per second from the ground. And what you're asked to find is the point where the two balls pass each other. They're at the same horizontal or vertical location. So they're horizontally lined up, but at the same height. So in terms of motion, they're going to match up at this location. Now the projectile path may not be exactly as I've drawn, but I can do this in for the purpose of the animation. So if I look at this, I have a matching point, and the matching point is the is the big thing. I have this. I want the balls to be at the same location. So I'm assuming that the ball goes up and it comes back down. And so ball A goes up with one equation, ball B goes up with another. Now the, the interesting thing and what I'm going to do for the second half of this problem is I'm going to switch this origin. And normally this is not something I would do. I would not set the origin up at 30 meters. I would set it at the low point. But it's kind of interesting to try it out. It'll work no matter how you do it. You'll just get slightly different numbers, that's all. But the result is actually the same. So if I look at the projectile motion equation, I have the same ones. I have SA, which is the position of the ball at any instant, which is with respect to its original location. Uh, the initial velocity of ball A, which is that 5 meters per second, the time it takes to get there, then the acceleration, which is 1 half GT squared. Now, normally, depending on the case, I might actually set it as negative, but here I, I haven't. So on the other side, I have ball B, which is starting out at a different position. So in this case, because my origin is here, and I would use, say, a typical XY, I have this location at minus 30. And so that ends up being plus V naught A T plus one half G not a GT squared. Now, so same acceleration in both cases, different initial velocity, and that initial velocity is that 20 meters per second here. So in order to get to the same location, I need to come to the same position. So I can take my two equations and set them equal to each other, and that tells me what position that is. And immediately I can get rid of acceleration, because acceleration isn't going to play a role because it's the same in both. So that disappears. Now the other thing I can do is, because I've set my origin at the top, s naught a is equal to zero. So there's a zero. And, well, actually a zero meters. And I end up with v, v naught a equals s naught b plus v naught a t. And if I just sort of write it out and do all of this stuff and I forget everything, but that's zero still, I can say, well, the final result is two seconds. So the time the traverse takes to get there is two seconds. And if I do the solution and just figure out where that location is, I have 0 plus 5 meters per second times 2 seconds, 1 half minus 9.81 g, uh, 9.81 meters per second squared, 2 seconds squared. And I'll end up with 9.62 meters. On the other hand, I have SB, which is thir minus 30 meters, minus minus 9.62. And so it's minus 20.38 with respect to my origin. So it's 9.62 meters down or really 20.38 meters away.
Okay, I can do this also in two different techniques. I'm going to use two. Uh, this is the uh, SMATH desktop approach. And you'll see that I have all the same numbers. I've got the five meters per second, same figure. I have these. I, in order to make my typing a little bit easier, I define everything as A1, B1, and all the rest. And I end up with uh, A3 equals one half grav acceleration. So those, and I have the same expression as I had before right here. Uh, and I get the same time. So what's interesting here is I can use I can do this calculation in in uh, in unit values. So five meters per second, that's 20 meters per second, minus 30 meters and zero meters. So I've set everything up, and I end up with the uh, drop minus 9.62 and the height from the bottom uh, minus 20.38 meters. So this is really kind of neat because one. When you're doing problems, one of the biggest challenges you have is keeping track of units. And what this does is make sure that when you make an error, it will appear right away. And it, it's kind of a useful feedback. I, I, I find it's great when I do it. The problem with this, and I'm using something called SMATH Desktop here, um, you got to go through a little bit of nonsense with the inputting things. So the meters per second and all the rest. If you do it in terms of the MathCAD approach, it's the same thing. The unit entry is a lot easier and you get the same same results, two meters per second minus 9.62 and minus 20.38 meters. It's going to be, uh, it's kind of meh. Uh, it, it's, it's not able to do the same type of complex equations as you can do in SMATH. So I'll do another video later where I look and I do some derivatives and it's really nice because I can do those directly in SMATH desktop. I can't do it in MathCAD because the free version is not quite as powerful. It's too expensive. It's something on the order of $1,000, uh, but the student version is available and you can take a look if you're interested. Uh, it's great for lots of things. Maple is also, there's lots of stuff out there that's really great for this. Um, and so that's one of the problems. In, in particular, later on when you start to solve simultaneous equations, this really is kind of a pain. Now, if I change the origin and I shift it down to uh, the lower point, so now this is zero and this location is 30 meters, I go through the same approach and I get all the same equations. So I, get, I set everything up, I, I have the positions, I have the vertical position set them equal to each other. Now the only difference here is this value, it, the S naught A is not available. And so S naught A is now 30 meters, S naught B is zero meters. So that's why I cancel that term. Same equation, different result, different numbers, everything flips out. But you'll notice of course that over here, you still get two seconds. So everything works out. You can put the calculation in. I've switched the numbers here at five, and SA is equal to 20.38 meters. So the location where you match up is the same location as you had in the previous problem. No surprises there, but the big thing is that the answer sort of works out really well. Now, what's really nice about this in this particular case is I can just shift everything around. So before it was five meters per second, 24 meters per second. This is now 30. I just re I copied and replaced it. Everything's there and I still get the same result that I got before. Um, I will try and put both of the worksheets that I had for MathCAD and, a, and SMATH desktop in there. Um, I really do encourage you as you're going through the homework, this is really, it, it's something that uh, forces you to make sure that you keep unit consistency in all your problems. And so I, I, I strongly encourage you to try and use it. Uh, there are a lot of computer packages available to you or algebra packages available to you. Uh, all of them are uh, usually pretty good. There's, I, I can think of a couple offhand, SciMath, uh, SciLab, uh, MATLAB, which is great. And I think you have access through ECF. Uh, another one that's kind of web only and I think it's kind of neat and if you could get a copy of Mathematica even better is Wolfram Alpha and that's a really great option and it allows 
clean notebooks and things like that. I, I haven't mentioned Maple, which is a product out of Waterloo, not, not because I don't like them, but it's actually a really great project uh, program, and I kind of wish you guys had access to it too. Thank you, and we'll talk again.